It's a hell of a story about Hurricane Carter. <laughs> All right, well, welcome back to another episode of 217 South Mills. Brought to you by Cabin Coffee Altoona, located at 2922 Meadowlark Lane in Altoona, Wisconsin. We're also brought to uh, brought to you guys by uh, Pizza Del Rey, located at 911 North Hastings Way in Eau Claire. They got the best pizza in Wisconsin, pizza buffet, and they're also selling frozen pizzas. And as you can see, folks, we are sitting outside of Cabin Coffee. We just brought a wooden table, plopped in the parking lot, <laughs> and I think it looks good. You know, the weather's not too bad. We figured... Yeah. Let's enjoy ourselves out here. A couple Just, of fat guys enjoying the fall weather. That's all it is. You know, we're not sweating. I even <laughs> forgot to change my shirt for crying out loud. But uh, you got your shirt. I forgot my shirt. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the hey, past weekend's game. Speaking of shirts. Oh, yeah. What well, the speaking hell? of shirts, let's talk about your shirt before we even get the intro. We got, a, we got a shirt from our buddy Tank. Tank's training facility down in uh, Granite, Granite City. City, Illinois. Tank is Chris Janik. He was a roommate of ours, a teammate of ours. He was nose guard. Uh High school wrestler, really great wrestler, and just owns a great gym down in Granite City. I got the experience, the opportunity to go down there and check it out uh, a couple years back. It's one of those old school gyms that's truly what we know is old school, but also he has that new school mentality of workouts and new school equipment. So it's a, it's a mix of both. I'm looking forward to We're planning on going down and doing a podcast. Uh, we're going to be taking my son down to actually work out with Chris, Damn. Tank, and uh, a couple of the football players that he trains down there. So definitely looking forward to that. I tell you, he's, uh, <clears throat> his story is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 we, if we piggyback off of last week's and, you know, uh, our podcast with, you know, finding your transition and adversity, I said he's got a hell of a story about adversity. And not only that, he was probably the strongest human being I've ever tried to block. Yes. It's like trying to block a freaking stump out of but the ground. The it's scary thing, too, is we're the two type of guys trying to lose weight and trying to be healthy. Yeah. Tank is still lifting mm -hmm. like an animal. Yes. Uh, yeah. I told him, like, when we go to the gym, we do lightweight, high reps. And I go, Tank, I don't even want to say what lightweight is because right. to you, it's like stuff that paperweights yeah. that you use probably at your office desk. Uh, but for him, you know, you see the videos. Go to Tank's training facility. On, uh, I believe he's on Twitter, Instagram, uh, or X, Instagram, Facebook. It's all over the place, posting videos nonstop of his clients doing workouts, the different uh, workouts that they offer for teams and position groups, but also him yep. doing lifting. And it's mind-blowing how much he's still uh, throwing up and the type of guy he is. But, yeah, to, to your point, his story is going to be phenomenal when, when the audience gets to hear mm -hmm. about what he's gone through in his life, the adversity that he's dealt with, and uh, – and where he's at today and the success oh, he's had. Okay. Uh, great family, man. He has a great family, great kids, and a successful business with Tank's training facility, the workout facility. He's doing very well for himself, and kudos to you, Tank, and thanks for the T-shirt, and I am wearing it uh, with pride, so thank you. Absolutely. My son got one, too, so he's enjoying it as well, and uh, I told him he could have it before he gets down there, but we're looking forward to getting him down there and putting him through some workouts. So, And it will be a great podcast that the three of us will have the opportunity to do which hopefully will be coming out in the next uh, couple months, maybe, mm -hmm. ish. But in today's episode, we're talking about the previous weekend's uh, Badger and Packer game. Mm -hmm. Badgers played Rutgers, and the Packers mm -hmm. played uh, I'm sorry, Arizona Cardinals. And it was a very successful and enjoyable weekend for Wisconsin, to say the least. It was. Uh, I thought the, the Badger looked really good. Obviously, they won 42-7. It was a pretty uh, one-sided game. I think the Badgers looked really well, and uh, I'm glad that they were able to – have back-to-back -back winning uh, games. Yeah, they're looking good. And we, we talked about it, and it's it's one of those, like, <clears throat> I'm thrilled with the two wins, mm -hmm. especially coming off of two losses. Now, we had two losses against two what I consider exceptionally well teams. Now, granted, Alabama's not the Alabama we used to know, right. but Alabama's still Alabama. They're still a, a top-ten team. Mm -hmm. uh, USC, I think there's still some questions out there, but they're a very good team. Mm -hmm. uh, Purdue and uh, Rutgers, I don't know. Rutgers, you know, the little bit I read up on them prior to this weekend, they sounded like a good team. It sounded mm -hmm. like it was going to be a challenge. A lot of people were picking Rutgers to win. But when you look at the stats, the tangibles that we know that help you win games, uh, total yards, we had 549. That's mm -hmm. unbelievable. unbelievable. I think in our career – I think we only went over 500 once mm -hmm. in our whole career, and that was against uh, average, sub-average Indiana team mm -hmm. uh, back in, I think, 99 or 2000. The time of possession, 
that's where it's huge. Thirty, Almost 35 minutes to almost 25 minutes. Having 10 more minutes of possession, keeping their offense off the field. I mean, that's the Wisconsin way to get a win. Absolutely. And like we talked about a ton, and what I hope that they learn over these last two weeks, the defense is stepping up, but on offense, we're running the ball. Yep. Running the ball opens everything up. I'm not saying go away from the pass. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying, you know, we got this quarterback that's stepping in, he's doing a hell of a job. Yep. Not saying not to let him throw the ball, not saying not to let the receivers have a chance, mm-hmm. but you got to open that up with the <clears> run. <throat> you got to bring more guys in the box, free up those receivers, makes it easier to throw. It just opens up your whole offense, you know, because you have to respect the run and you also have to respect the pass. Otherwise, if you can't run the ball, then you have to throw the ball. And then you become a one-dimensional offense, and it's easy to defend. It really is. And uh, so, um, and if you look at some more of the uh, rushing yards, we had 309 yards rushing on the ground, which yeah. is very impressive. So now I, I kind of want to go off on a little tangent about this. You know, um, you've heard – I mean, I follow the Badgers. You follow the Badgers because, yep. obviously, we have some body parts and some pieces <laughs> invested in that foundation. Left a little bit down there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the people who didn't play football – and people who are just fans, like, understand, we love that you're fans. Like, yep. we, the fans are what make us successful, the way we travel, the way we um, go about our business, and what the expectation of our fans is. And, and, and I appreciate that. Now, here comes my soapbox, and I'm going to stand on it. For those of you who have not played football past high school, and those of you that are just fans and never played football, do you have any concept – how hard it is to win a college football game week in and week out. So you all these, uh, get rid of the whole coaching staff. Yeah. Fickle's not the way. Uh, get rid of Phil Longo, the offensive line. Get rid of Trestle. Like, again, it's so hard for you to put the effort, the players that you need, not to mention the injuries that you sustain, um, to put a together a package on the field. And uh, again, have a little grace, have a little patience because this is Fickle's second year and it's his coaching staff's second year. And quite honestly, I just get tired of uh, the spoiled brat mentality that we kind of have as, as fans here. The expectation is it, never going to change and it shouldn't change. We should have a winning program. However, comma, every time we lose, are we going to say fire the coach? Like, that's the bullshit that I hate. I know. And I 100% agree with you. And part of me, I think, and it doesn't put me at ease, but I think I have the, where it all started. Wisconsin, when you were a little kid growing up in Wisconsin, football program was horrible. Right. Uh, basketball had its successful years, had a couple successful players, Michael Finley being, mm-hmm. you know, the top player on the basketball team. But during our years at Wisconsin, and I'm not trying to say it's all us, but we were obviously a big chunk of it. Uh, football, starting with the 94 team, carrying over to us in 90, yep. 99, 2000 Rose Bowl, brought a ton of success to football, basketball, <laughs> hitting the final four. Mm-hmm. And Wisconsin fans, when you go back after, during that, Wisconsin fans were arguably the best in the country. Yes. You know, like we say, when we were playing, that stadium was erupted. Yes. When the defense was on the field, you couldn't hear. We were disturbing their offense, disturbing their cadence. Now, when we go back and we expect to experience that same thing in the stands, like I say, where I sit during the first half, you're barely getting applause. Mm -hmm. Like you stand up on a third down when our defense is on the field, somebody's yelling down or you're tapping you on the shoulder, like, could you please sit down? I can't see. Mm -hmm. You know, it, Camp Randall's a little bit turned into almost like the student section. You know, you go to a Penn State, you go to an Ohio State, that student section is there. Yep. When the Badgers have a student section, unless we're playing a top five team in the country, they don't even fill the student section until the fourth quarter. They stay for jump around, then they start piling right back up. Mm-hmm. They literally have student section tickets just to come in, to jump around, okay. and then they go back to the party, okay. which is sad. And to so that was my little soapbox, but then to – go after your point with winning. Yes, we expect success, but at the same time too, we're the University of Wisconsin. We don't have the money Mm -hmm. that these other schools have. Like we were talking about the top 25 before, and I'll just go and order the way they're ranked. Texas, one, Oregon, two, Penn State, three, Ohio State, four, Georgia, five, Miami, six, seven, Alabama, eight, LSU, nine, Iowa State, 10, Clemson. Even after that, it's Tennessee, Notre Dame, BYU, A&M, Boise State. These schools have millions upon millions of dollars to pay players. It is not what came out a couple of years ago, name, image, and likeness that a player could get paid. Mm-hmm. Now it's actually pay for play. 
Right. The school that has the most money, which this year is Texas. Ironically, Texas is number one in the country. And you know, ironically, Arch Manning is backup quarterback. Uh, getting $4 million. Yeah. $4, $4, million, $4 million, million, dollars million. To be a backup in college. Yes. To be a freaking backup. In, in college. Yes. College. And Wisconsin can't afford no. that. It's just point blank. And me and you talked even earlier about coaches. Long before NIL came out, I want to say – it was like the early, like around 2011 to 2013 during that Rose Bowl run where mm-hmm. we vacationed in Pasadena, didn't win any games. No. Dave Aranda was arguably the best defensive coordinator in the country. And I believe he was making between two and $300,000 a year at Wisconsin, which fans will say, well, that's a good salary. Well, it's not in college football. Mm-hmm. Like that, LSU offered him a million dollars a year. He left. So we had the best defense coordinator in the country and just left to go to somebody that could afford to pay him. Okay. And that's the thing Wisconsin stuck with is we don't have that kind of money. We're now, never going to have the money for the players. We're yeah. never going to have the money for the coaches. We have to do the best with what we have. And the best with what we have is not going to be undefeated seasons every year. Correct. So you got to suck it up. You got to believe what we believe. You got to hope for a winning season, hope for a great bowl game and hope for fun and excitement. And mm-hmm. that's what the Badgers typically give you, but to not cheer in the first half, to not, to have the ability to have that stadium erupt and not do it when it's third and third and long or, or just a third down. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about Penn State. Penn State will be first and 10, first play of the game, and the quarterback has to call timeout because the stadium the game. gets too loud. Right. They can't do the cadence. Correct. That's insane. And Wisconsin has the ability to do it. They've done it. We've seen it. We've experienced it. And like we've said, it's, it's almost like they got spoiled. A good majority of them. I agree. And I'll do a step back, too. Uh, back to your coaching. Again, People who, who never played football at that level, or including the pros, de- they don't understand, well, $200,000 a year is amazing. That's a great salary, which it is. The amount of time, oh, yeah. effort, energy, away from your family, away from your kids. Yeah. Like I don't ever remember a time going to the stadium or not seeing the coaches' cars there before I was there working out at 6 a.m., and well after practice was over and well after everything was already said and done, they're still there yep. watching film, prepping, making sure that we are putting together or that they are putting together the best offense, defensive uh, scheme that they possibly yep. can and putting the best players that they have available that aren't injured right now in the position to win. Like you can even relate that to the NFL. It, in college, it's a lot. It's more in the NFL. Mike Sherman's first year he took over as head coach, it was the year before I got drafted, his gift to all his assistants was an aero mattress. He said, keep this under your desk in case you don't get to go home that night so you have a bed to sleep on. Mm-hmm. These guys would be – we would drive by – there would be a night during the week. We'd stay out late, go to dinner, hang out. Mm-hmm. We would drive by the stadium late at night. Right. Every single coach's office light is on. Mm-hmm. We used to call them while we were out late <laughs> at night and be like, go home. We got practice tomorrow morning. But, yeah, back to your point about hours, the cashier at Target's probably making more per hour right. than a college football coach. Correct. Because of the hours they're putting in. Like, yeah. like, 80 hours is a joke to say 80 hours a week. I mean, between recruiting, on the road, like you said, most coach, most coaches on staffs are at the office well past midnight and probably in around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So, so it's go home, you know, pat your wife on the shoulder, use the restroom, back to the office. <laughs> Check in to make you know, sure the house is still there. Yeah. And your wife can, like, pack up all your shit and leave. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's football exactly. season. And it's a long season. That's yeah. the thing. Like, it takes – it started back in – well, I've, actually, summer conditioning started in, in summer. Yeah. And then you go into a fo- uh, fall football camp. It's, yeah. it's full tilt from the minute – that starts. Yeah. And basically coaches get about maybe two to three weeks a year where, and that's after January mm-hmm. where they don't have to do anything, but then, you know, they're, they're going to coaching meetings. They're, that spring ball yep. starts up. That's a whole month. Yep. They got to prepare for that. They have to do that. Then after spring ball, yeah, it dies down a little bit. You still have the summer workouts, this, that, the, preparing for the season. It's a never ending story. And the one thing, the blessing that the coaches and the coaches family had while we were there, coach Alvarez had a rule that during the season, I believe it was every Tuesday night, it was mandatory. Coaches' wives had to bring their children to mm-hmm. dinner. Yeah. And we'd have dinner, and the coaches' wives and kids would be there. And it was a Coach Alvarez rule. And obviously, any rule that Coach Alvarez makes, no one's going to break it. Absolutely. All the wives and kids showed up at dinner, had dinner with the family. Yep. We had dinner with them at training table. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was just a mandatory, like, you're going to see your family. And this is the way I'm going to make it happen. So, yeah, back to your point and just bring everything full circle. 
I think fans need to understand that. They need to understand everything we said. And it's one thing to say they understand it. Prove it in the stands. Okay. Get loud in that first quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, make, make the other team call it. When was the last? And that's the funny thing, too. Let, let's even take, go a step further and take the fourth quarter out of it. When did Wisconsin ever have the other team call timeout in quarter one, two, or three? I yeah, couldn't tell you when. No. I absolutely. I mean, you could talk. Maybe a game here and there when we, uh, are, and maybe even before our time. Uh, yeah, you'd have to go back that far. Yes, yes. But nowadays, it's not yeah. any any time in the, in, in the last ten years. We could do the podcast in the first half of the Badger game, uh, Badger Big Ten game. We could do the podcast in the stands without without I, without raising our voice. No, absolutely. I yeah. agree. That's yep. uh. So again, all you all you boo birds out there, step it up. Be fans like your parents were yeah. fans. Get That's loud. Ha- you know, have a good time, but you got to get loud. And stop and stop calling for people to get fired again. Two years yeah, in, it's, yeah. it's his second year. He's not even two two years. His coaching staff is still trying to establish players that they, that they're recruiting and bringing in. Like I'm so tired of hearing it. Again, you have you don't have the investment that you and I have in all the guys that we played with, you know, before us and after us. When you have that kind of investment in something, then you can run your mouth. Absolutely. Here's my deal. Let's start calling for people to get fired in uh, politics. We got politicians working <laughs> forty plus years that haven't done shit, and nobody wants to bat an eye at that. It, we act like it's totally normal, but yeah, a coach that comes in that hasn't even recruited players, taken over for the previous coach that got fired yep. or left, mm-hmm. and we're getting all up in arms yep. because we lost against a top ten team yep. at home or on the road or whatever. Like, yeah. we just got to take it one step at a time. We got to we got to take a deep breath. We got to understand where Wisconsin. I'm not saying that to put Wisconsin down, right. but. Today, we don't have the money today. Right. Look at our finances compared to Texas. They blow us out of the wall. They're, once again, they're paying their backup quarterback $4 million to be a backup. I don't think our coaches are making $4 million. No. <laughs> like, no. you're, you're paying backup to pay. Four million dollars. Yeah, four million dollars. Four million. Four million dollars a year. I know. It's not four million for his. Co- like that's another thing people don't understand right. about these college kids. Arch Manning is not getting four million dollars for his college career at Texas. Mm-hmm. He's getting four million dollars this year. Yep. Then next year he's negotiating the same deals or more deals or bigger deals. Like these kids are raking it in, yeah. and yeah. Wisconsin can't do that. So unless who, who are the I'm trying to think of the Wisconsin guys. Uh, the one finance guy, Cole, uh, Cole or. Herb Cole, Herb, Herb Cole, Herb Cole. Yeah, have him donate a hundred million. Yeah. Have uh, for the Cole Center. Yeah, have the finance guy from Milwaukee. I can't think of his name. I tried to get on this plane for the Rose Bowl back in 2010 when Mosini shut the airport down. He was gonna he was gonna allow me on the plane if I was in Madison. I said I was in Wausau. He's like, there's no way we're holding a plane for two hours. <laughs> so I was that close to getting on a private jet, but uh, I understood he took off. But have him donate ten or a hundred million. <laughs> like get some of these big time guys okay. to donate, and then. We could have a conversation, yeah. but it's money talks. Hey, Joe, what the heck does it mean when you say cabin coffee Altoona is a roastery? Are you making fun of the coffee or something? Come on now, Bill. Sounds to me like you've had one too many shots to the head. It means we're a roastery. We buy our beans green from all over the world and roast right here on site. It's the freshest coffee you can get. Is that why one place I used to go to tasted burnt and the other place tastes like brown flavored water? That's exactly why, Bill. So stop on down to 2922 Meadowlark Lane, Cabin Coffee Altoona. Just remember, folks, everything's better at the cabin. And mark my word, we talked about this. There's 12 teams in the college football playoffs this year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have your championship teams, the Big Ten champion, the SEC champion, like the Power Four champions are in there. And then the other eight are at-large bids. I guarantee eight of those top 12 playoff teams are going to be the biggest money teams in the country. I agree. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's ever going to be uh, – will they ever put a cap on the NIO? See, that's the thing is – and this is – I mean, I always hated the NCAA. They're the NCAA assholes. I agree. They've never done anything good. When we were playing, we were going to lose our scholarship if we were a bagger at a grocery store. Mm-hmm. Now, a kid can make $4 million a year and it's no big deal. They went from the most regulated organization in the country – to the most deregulated organization in the country because they were scared and they let wokeness and politics get into their decision-making and they made the biggest mistake ever. They just opened the floodgates. And I say to people, until the floodgates get closed, Mm -hmm. mark my words, there's going to be an 18, 19 year old in the next couple of years that gets offered a hundred million dollars from a Nike or from somebody like that saying, you're our athlete for life. We're going to give you this lump sum. You're signing a contract for life. We're not going to renegotiate it. It's a life contract, and you're going to have a 19 year old with 100 million dollars in the bank. Let me ask you that. What do you think is going to happen to that program and that kid and his teammates? And when you were a 19 year old, I mean, do you think that you were uh, intelligent enough 
Do you think that you were financially savvy I enough? I could handle $100. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. You give me $100, we're partying like we're freaking millionaires. Yes. You know what I mean? Like we're buying everybody everything. Yep. We think $100 is like a year's worth of freaking, let's go get steaks. Yep. You know, like we're living life on 100 bucks. Yep. You know, giving these kids, like, and here's another thing I say. <laughs> and there's schools like Wisconsin that are trying to do it the right way, trying to educate kids mm -hmm. on right and wrong. But don't tell me that the IRS isn't going to start putting college football players in jail because they're not paying taxes. Right. You think if you give a kid a hundred thousand dollars that that kid's smart enough to say, well, I better put 25 grand aside because I'm going to have to pay this in taxes at the end. That kid's spending a hundred thousand dollars. As fast you as he give can. him a hundred thousand. It's going to be gone in a month. He's buying a car, maybe a house, a yep. bunch of shit. He's not saving a hundred thousand. Now you give a kid a million. You think that kid's putting away 250 grand or no, 300 grand no. for taxes? Fuck no. I never even fathomed that kind of money growing up as a kid. You know, my dad was a factory worker. My mom cleaned houses. Hardest working people I've ever met yep. in my life. Still, I mean, that's where I got my work ethic from. Yep. That kind of money was so astronomically high to me. The 100,000, yep. the 200,000, the million, I, I can't even wrap my head around it. Yeah. Can't. No, and, uh, I hear you. I was and, I was dumb enough and immature enough to do exactly what you what we just described. I would have spent all of it. Absolutely. And to answer your question, yeah, I think there's going to be a bunch of issues. And yes, I think they at some point they have to regulate. Now, granted, I already know before asking you, me and you would 100 percent side with athletes deserve to get paid. 1,000 percent. Fuck this amateurism. Mm -hmm. uh, schools are making millions upon millions of dollars right. on teenagers and early 20 year olds that are putting their bodies on the line. Mm -hmm. Do they deserve money? Yes. Are, should we allow kids to make millions? And I'm not saying that money should go to the NCAA, but you got to put some sort of structure in place. Maybe you start a trust for every kid and everything over 50 grand a year goes into the trust and you're not able to tap into it until you're 26. Something, I don't know, I'm just like spitballing, but you can't give a kid millions of dollars. No. Like let alone the animosity on the team. Think about if you're a lineman beating the shit out of your body and the quarterback's making four mil yeah. and you got a $3,000 deal with a freaking oil change company down the road. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Or the guy next to you, your tackle's making a half million and you're making, like, I mean, just, I can't imagine those locker rooms. Yes. You know, I can't imagine Talk any about of divide, that. divide. Yeah, and, 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 and even though that, like, I'm picturing me and you back in the nineties, you're making this and I'm making this, even though we're friends, I'm still pissed off. Absolutely. 100%. I, I can yeah. tell you, man, like Bill, I'm so happy for you. Like, this yep. is freaking amazing. I'm, I'm so proud, happy for you. Yeah. As you're walking or driving around a Denali, yeah. and I'm driving around a '74 Pinto, because that's what yeah. I can afford. I mean, seriously, yeah. like it, or a scooter because you can't afford it. Absolutely, you know what I mean, like, so it's yeah. one of those things where I don't know how you how without you without it. regulations of yeah. some sort and not just yeah. a freaking free for all. Um, it's interesting to see. Yeah, but again, it comes back to again. We'll bring it back to the Wisconsin. We don't have the money. No. In the state, no. Nor will we. Nor do I foresee us even no. remotely getting close to the middle of the pack with money. No. And that's it, until regulations happen, mm -hmm. which they want collegiate sports to be even. They want it to be equal. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not with the money. It's going to come down to whoever can pay the most mm -hmm. is going to have the best odds of winning the most. Just is what it is. I mean, you. Could, I, and I don't know. What the, we'll have to look into it. Maybe we'll post. Oh, holy crap! Here, how much the teams have to hey. spend. How long until we have uh, China backing Absolutely. college football players? Yeah, no shit. I, I why, mean, why not? Yeah, they're everywhere else. Yeah, exactly, they're everywhere else. So, at what point in time are are we going to have a uh, China yep. China backing? Well, and, and even stupid shit like no regulations, no regulations. What about if a player? Uh, like, I'm sure there's some sort of rule, but I'm sure the players are going to try and buck the system. What if they want to put patches on their jersey? Huh? You know, elite auto care yep. on the back of my jersey. You're like, call, call cabin cabin coffee, yeah, Altoona. Cabin coffee, Altoona on part of their uniform. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you got to have lines and rules. Like, how, that's why I hate the NCAA. And yep. anybody that works for them, you should drive in the desert and don't ever come back. I don't want to say anything too harsh, but they suck. They fucking suck. And once again, they made another horrible decision. Mm -hmm. I don't think the NCAA has ever done anything right. No. But here they have an opportunity to try and control something that they intended to be good that turned horrible. Mm -hmm. They got to at some point control it. 
I agree. It's, it's getting out of control. To finish back up with the badges, though, you did talk about our running game. And I'll just talk really quick about our offense and defense. Tawi Walker, I believe I pronounced his name right. I hope he, I hope I am. We'll have to um, have him on the show one of these days to correct the pronunciation. But he had 24 <laughs> carries, 198 yards, three touchdowns. This kid, it's his second game as a starter. Uh, what was the running back's name that stepped out? Chaz Malusi. Chaz, Malusi. Chaz, Malusi. Chaz Malusi. 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 Maluski. Maluski. It's not. That's not Polish. You dipshit. No. It's Malusi. more. It's, yeah, it's more Italian. It's, it's more, more Dago than Dago, Dago sounding. Yeah, Chaz. Stepped away from the team because of injuries. We're not sure if it's for the year or permanently, but he did step away, which was sad to see because he was a hell of a running yeah. back. But this Tawi Walker has beyond yeah. stepped up, looks like a Wisconsin running back, runs like a Wisconsin mm-hmm. running back. But at the same time, too, we don't know if it's teams are playing. Our o- o- line's blocking well, yeah. opening up holes, holes that we remember as holes, and uh, the running backs are hitting them. Mm-hmm. On defense, uh, Rutgers, who claim to have a good rushing attack, our defense held them to 51 yards rushing. Yep. That's the way Wisconsin defense steps up. Yep. And once again, you know, we go back and forth on was it the teams, but we got all these fans being like, fire the D coordinator, fire Fickle, fire this, mm-hmm. fire that. And then boom, you have two phenomenal games. Now we also have an ending of our season. I had it here somewhere, but we got Penn State, who's number three in the country. Mm-hmm. We got Iowa, who I don't believe is ranked right now, but Iowa always plays. Always plays at hard. Iowa. Yep. We finish with Minnesota. It doesn't matter. Minnesota could be winless. That's going to be a challenging game. It's the Super Bowl. Yeah. So we got some tough games ahead of us mm-hmm. that we need that fan support. We need the players to continue to get better. We do have a late bye week, which is nice. I think the bye week. I thought we had a bye already. You know what? I think we did. We I did have a bye. We have two buys. I'm There's no you. freaking yeah, way. Don't yell at me. Maybe it's because I'm going to yell because I think you're wrong. Well, I believe I'm not wrong, but mm-hmm. I do have it somewhere in my notes. I think there's a buy uh, sometime in November. I thought I saw a buy. I could be wrong. Hit me up on social media if I'm wrong. I'll say I'm sorry. I've said I'm sorry a lot in my life, probably over 15,000 times. <laughs> I'll say it one more time to whatever fan shows me a schedule and shows there's not a vibe. But I think, oh, nope, that's not. Still a top 25. But yeah, so that's basically the Badgers. Uh, we're happy with what we saw. Mm-hmm. Still question marks based on the teams. Absolutely. You know, like we lost two good teams. We beat two teams that we're not sure how good they actually are. So it's still questioning, but we're happy with what we saw. Like you said at the beginning, to win a game – is not easy huh? to win two in a row is not easy to continue it, it and here's something coaches say all the time it's easy to get in the habit of losing it's hard to get in the habit of winning yes it is uh you know even my son he his he's got one more regular season high school football game left and then they're already guaranteed the first round of the playoffs the rumor has it that there's a possibility the first round of the playoffs is going to be a team that they played this previous weekend that they they won the conference championship in double overtime and I, I was talking to my daughter, and I said, oh. And she's like, what? I go, it's tough to beat the same team twice. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, like both teams are going to get better. Both coaching staffs are going to work on a team to improve, to correct mistakes. But to beat the same team twice in one season, it's it's a difficult task. And winning, like you talk to or listen to anybody that's had success, and we had the opportunity to have success at Wisconsin and myself a little bit beyond – Winning is not easy. You know, that's what all, like, that work in February goes into winning that game. Those details, that extra time to spend in the film room goes into, you know, that overtime win or that, uh, you know, when you pick up that the safety's two yards on the other side of the hash, those little details. All You mentioned a couple of weeks ago about football is a game of inches. That's where the inches matter mm-hmm. in the game of football. And, and even us, we sometimes – fall into that fan and forget a little bit like, oh, we need this win. You know, and then you think back to what we went through and coaches and players on these current teams are not thinking about next week. No. They are focused right now on the week ahead of them. Yep. They are, most of the players probably don't even know how many games are left on the schedule. And that goes to a good coaching staff. Did you, ever, did you ever look ahead at no. games? I had I no know. freaking idea who we were playing I know. until we did the scouting report yeah. on Sundays yeah. after we after the workout run or, or the the workout and the shakeout run. Yeah. I had no idea who the hell we were playing there. My, my parents and friends were good about not reaching out to me about uh-huh. future stuff, but occasionally if my parents were coming to a road game, they'd be like, hey, could you talk to so-and-so to try and get tickets together? And I'm just like, I don't even know when we're playing. Like, if they were coming to uh, Penn State or whatever, right. like, how many weeks away is Penn Like, right. like we got Michigan this week. That's yeah. all. You know, and I know, like, I still laugh, like, of the memories, and we talked about this. Like, there's certain things you and I, we can't, re- I can't remember the score of the Rose Bowl. Right. You know, we won the Rose Bowl. That was the – they still played on ESPN Classic. That's mm-hmm. how big a game was. I couldn't tell you what the score was. But I could, I remember an interview 
prior to one of the Michigan games. I can't tell you what year it was because I don't remember. But I remember our like our mantra going into an interview. Oh, they're a good defense. Oh, they're going to be tough for us. Like not like that was what our coaches pushed down mm-hmm. on us. You're not going to say anything. You're not going to give them bulletin board material. Mm-hmm. And these reporters would just look at us and smile because we'd say the same shit over and over. And now I've had the opportunity a couple times at golf outings running the same reporters <laughs> and they'll interview me and I'll talk shit about the world. I'll talk shit about the other <laughs> golfers. T- and they're like, God damn, they're like, why didn't you talk like this when you were in Wisconsin? And I look and there's Coach Alvarez. They go, that's why. And I point to Coach Alvarez. I'm like, we weren't allowed to. No. Nope. They're like, we had no idea you talk like this. I'm like, oh, I, I had opinions about everything, but we weren't allowed to share. Like it was mind the rules. I agree, hundred percent. And, and, and honestly, and, and I'm not trying to be that horse. It doesn't matter if you have better athletes all the time, because I watched a movie any any given Sunday, but it's any given Saturday. And by the way, if you've never seen it, the Al Pacino freaking uh, halftime speech. I get fired up to this day about that, but uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty impressive. But it doesn't matter any given any given Saturday, no matter who you're playing, you can you can be embarrassed, and, and it happens. And we know that, and that's the thing. That's why I'm so proud of the Big Ten is because of the conference we played in. Mm-hmm. Not every other conferences have like SEC. That's a great example, and I've argued this with the SEC fans all the time. They've had tr- tremendous teams at the top, mm-hmm. but they've had horseshit teams at the bottom. Yep. With where the Big Ten, we have, like right now we got. Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State at the top. Mm-hmm. But any one of those teams could lose to uh, Illinois, could lose to uh, Minnesota or Wisconsin. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the way the Big Ten is. You got that right. And that's why I challenged everybody. I'm like, you're so good. Come to the Big Ten. Right. Or like now, open it up to more playoff teams mm-hmm. and let's see how good you are. You're great in your conference when half your schedule is horseshit. It's the Little Sisters of the Poor you're playing <laughs> every other week. You know what I mean? Like, come and play with the big boys week in and week out. Mm-hmm. You know, even if you get a win, you might walk away feeling like a loss because of how beat up you got. I agree. It's more physical. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen that going from college to the NFL, seeing uh, AC. I played with Jamal Reynolds. And no offense to Jamal, he was a great guy. I was friends with him at the time, but he played in the ACC. Looked like a freaking beast in college. Got to the NFL, boom, everybody's punching him, locking him out. Mm-hmm. First round draft pick, 12 overall. Everybody's like, what do we do? How do we draft it? Like, and I mean, no offense to Jamal, he lasted a couple of years. He got paid. Mm-hmm. It was before the rookie, uh, rookie salary cap. So he got his money's worth and right. made it, uh, I think it was like five or seven years he made it, but he was 12 overall. They mm-hmm. thought he was going to be a god. Yep. First practice we had pads on, they were like, mm, he's not a god. <laughs> I think it was Earl Dotson too, who at the time was a backup because yep. he was hurt two years prior. Mm-hmm. Tausha took over. Earl was in with the twos and boom, just punched him, locked him out. And they're like, yeah, that must have been a mistake. Let's do it again. Fluke. Boom, locked him out. And Earl was like, yeah, let's do this all day. Like, Earl was <laughs> loving it because he's used to going against – we had Vonnie Holiday. Yeah. Vonnie Holiday looked like a three technique, and he was lining up at the end, weighing like 290 mm-hmm. at the end. And then you get Jamal Reynolds, who's like five foot eleven, like 260. Right. Earl's like, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. You know, like, set, set, punch. And lo- set, set, punch. Lock, just and lock, and punch. And then don't move. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't spin, couldn't bull rush, couldn't do anything. Yeah. So let's touch on the Packers quick before yeah, we wrap it up. That. Obviously, it won't be as long as the Badgers, but once again, great week. Great back, back, back week, yes. And uh, just overall uh, destroyed the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. Shut Kyler Murray down at quarterback. And Jordan Love, seeing a healthy Jordan Love boy, gives mm-hmm. me a lot of optimism. He looked good. And the running game was there. So we were yes. able to run the ball. We open up the entire offense because you can run, you can throw. They have yeah. to respect both. And uh, really great showing. And uh, I, I don't have anything to really add to that other than they looked really good and they played like the Packers that we know and love. They did. Yeah. Uh, just to go a little bit more into what you said, it was literally all phases. Defense played phenomenal. Mm-hmm. There's been questions back and forth on the defense. And I know, once again, like you said about Wisconsin, it's an early staff still trying to implement mm-hmm. the full defense, but they locked the Cardinals down. Yep. And you got a Kyler Murray that has the ability to run just as much as he does mm-hmm. running that offense with his arm. And shut, I think we shut him down to 51 yards. Uh, on offense, didn't give up any sacks in the game. That's huge. Me and you both know you keep your quarterback upright and healthy, especially Jordan Love, that this was after he came back from that injury. Mm-hmm. This was the first week I saw him healthy. Okay. We all saw two weeks ago, he's thrown off one foot trying to get throws out there. Mm-hmm. And it just, it was almost scary. Like, should he be on the field? Because if he takes one wrong hit, we might be back to the yeah. backup again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, overall, Packers look good. 
NFC North, hands down the best division in football. Everybody's mm-hmm. talking about it. We're outscoring our opponents by more. We're giving up the least amount of points. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think all of our teams have the best record overall in the division. And unfortunately, we had the team to the West. The as, uh, yeah, the, sure. yeah. the Queens. The Queens. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even refer to them as that. They don't deserve it. So yeah. I, I think Queens is probably – I was too respectful for that team. So anything over the West, I don't even acknowledge just by color. They're purple. The other team is freaking maroon. And that's, that's all I know about them. I feel it. So. I feel it. But yeah, so the last thing is Jordan Love's actually getting talk as of this week that he's potentially in the MVP mix. Oh, nice. Granted, long season ago. Yeah, there's. But if we continue playing the way we played mm-hmm. and keep improving, he's definitely got a possibility for that. His arm, you know, it's almost like Aaron Rodgers all over again. I was very suspect about Aaron Rodgers, a suspect about the whole, the, the way everything went down with Favre, with Rodgers taking over, all that. And then early on in Rodgers' career, I go, and I missed, I didn't have the eye. I looked at him, and I go, he sucks. He's <laughs> injury prone. He can't win games. Mm-hmm. I don't see talent. Well, that was his first year playing. He cleaned it up really quick and became the Aaron Rodgers we all know and love. Jordan Love, I was sort of 50 50 on. I'm like, you look at his college career, there's, a ton of positives, but is he the guy or is he just a <clears> tremendous <throat> backup? Right. You know, like uh, Doug Peterson, who I'm not sure where Doug is now, but he coached the Phillies doing right. uh, Super Bowl champion. He was Favre's backup mm-hmm. when I was there. Doug knew the offense better than Favre, better than the old coordinator, better than the head coach. But Doug wasn't a Brett Favre. Right. Doug wasn't an Aaron Rodgers. He knew it. He could produce. Mm-hmm. He could get you a win when it's needed. But he's not your at, – at the time, especially with his age and his career, he wasn't the type of guy that is your quarterback for the next 10 years. Jordan Love has definitely proved going into this year, fight, coming back from an injury, dealing with adversity, he's definitely got the talent. Agreed. Keep him healthy, keep him upright, and I think Packer fans are going to have years of happiness ahead of them. I agree. I All right. That about wraps it up, Bill. I think we do wrap it up. So, uh, once again, we'd like to thank uh, Pizza Del Rey, located at 911 North Hastings Way in Eau Claire. Some of the best pizza in Wisconsin. They got a pizza buffet and do frozen pizzas. We love that they're a sponsor and uh, help us out a ton with the show. And Cabin Coffee, which is mine and my wife's coffee shop. We are located at 2922 Metal Arc Lane in Altoona, Wisconsin. Again, folks, I think uh, just remember, if you're looking for fresh coffee and you want to know how to do it, we have information out there. We've got the videos, got the on, videos social media, on social media, media on, how to order. on how to order coffee. Um, just make sure that you are reaching out. I'll call you, get your order, get you shipped out as fast as we possibly can. And, uh, yeah, so, so far it's been very positive. So, again, if you want to try some damn good coffee, Bill, why don't you just send an email. And That's coffee on. Altoona at cabincoffee.net. Altoona. Altoona at cabincoffee.net. That's where you send the email. The menu is on the website. Joel will help you out if you're not sure what to order. And then give them your contact info and address, and we'll ship it out to you. Also, I want to thank uh, Chris give up. Tank, Janet, yep. Tank's training facility. Thanks for the gear. We're loving the gear. Love uh, love Tank. Can't wait to get him on the podcast to allow him to share his story with our audience. They're definitely going to like it. I think it's going to wow them. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's going to sit them down in their seats because it definitely did me when, when I met up with him a couple years ago and heard the whole story from start to finish. It was definitely a shocker. Everything that he's gone through. Yeah, unbelievable he's come story. out the other side, uh, strong as could be, and we're proud of him, excited for him, and yeah, he's doing great. All right, man. All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Thanks. folks. Thank you. Almost- Thank you for listening to Joe and I today. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. If you like what you heard, please give 217 South Mills a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Go tell your friends about us. Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, and YouTube. I'd like to thank Cabin Coffee Altoona for sponsoring us. Everything is always better at the cabin. See you next time. And remember, folks, red ass the run.